Are you a SNAP beneficiary, otherwise known as food stamps or sometimes referred to as EBT? Did you get your raise the other day? Maybe you did and maybe you didn't. Either way, this is a question I received multiple times as of recently and why I wanna jump on this quick video here to discuss the details of why did some people get a raise and why did some other people get stiffed? As in, you didn't get a raise at all. Again, a very concerning topic and something I wanna to bring to your attention as well as all of the other changes that have gone into effect for the SNAP benefit program as of recently. So we've got a lot of things going on here. It's always a very busy time of year, the last few months of the year, and again, let's get into it and talk about what's going on. First off, can I ask you a huge favor of you? Please make sure to like the video with the big thumbs up button right down below. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Also, if you haven't done so yet, please make sure to subscribe to the channel as well. Totally free to do so with the big subscribe button down below. I'm here for you every single day, have been for years with videos like this, bringing you the details, discussing what's going on, pointing out anything you could possibly grab or take advantage of. I have about 5,000 videos here on the channel because I'm here for you every single day, multiple times a day every day, every single day of the week. So again, thank you so much for being here. I truly want to help you out in any way that I can. And uh, let's get into it and talk about it. All right, so just a few days ago, it was not that long ago at all, October 1st. Hmm, okay, what about it, right? Well, a couple different things. First off, we entered into the fourth quarter of the year, and we also changed over to the 2025 fiscal year. But wait, it's not the calendar year, you're right. It's the fiscal year for the federal government. Now, here's what also is interesting about this because SNAP benefits run by the fiscal year for the federal government. They do not run by the calendar year. So actually really quickly, before I get into this any further, I just wanna say this much. Everything I'm talking about here in this video pertains to SNAP benefits, food stamps, and those benefits loaded onto EBT cards, okay? So just wanna point that out because some of the things I'm gonna talk about here may sound a little bit familiar like with your other fixed income benefit, but those come in later, okay? Again, this is another question I get all the time, but just wanna point that out really fast here. All right, so first off, let's hammer this out. Why did some people get a raise the other day at the beginning of the month, as in October 1st, and why did some other people not get a raise? Well, it comes down to this, the COLA. Now, okay, when I say COLA, I'm talking about the COLA, cost of living adjustment for SNAP benefits. Believe it or not, SNAP benefits get a COLA just like Social Security benefits. The Social Security benefit COLA, that's a totally different topic. That's why I wanted to clarify that like a minute ago. We'll talk about that in a separate video. But this is the COLA for SNAP. Guess how much the COLA for SNAP was this year, this new fiscal year 2025? I'll tell you, 0.2%, two tenths of 1%. I've said this before in other videos. It's way easier to, t to say zero than it is to say two tenths of 1%, okay? Just say zero because that's practically what it is. So my point is, some people that are maybe getting lower benefits, like, you know, quite a bit lower, um, you know, less than like the maximums, you may not even see a raise whatsoever. Reason being is a point two tenths of, you know, two tenths of 1%, 0.2% of a raise to say a $100 benefit is 20 cents. You get my point here? That's nothing. It, it's like nothing. It, it's absolutely nothing. Okay. Uh, so that's why I'm just saying, don't even like count it as anything. Cause that's why now when you get into the several hundred dollars, if you're somebody getting, you know, if the household size of say two, or maybe even you're capped out at one, if you have one house or uh, one member in your household and you get the maximum benefit of 292, you got a, you got a dollar raise. That's it. $1 a month. If you're somebody getting the maximum benefit for a household of one, okay? It went from 291 to 292, one dollar. That's it, monthly, okay? <laughs> Nuts, you see my point here? So until you get way into the hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month, and that's when you start to see one dollar, two dollars, you know, like a little bit of change there. That's about it, okay? So it's just so much easier to say, you got a zero raise, because that's basically what it came down to. So that's why some people got a raise. And again, when I say a raise, it's not much, okay? Like a household of say, four, okay, a household of four, got a raise of two, I think it was $2 or $3, something like that. It was not much, okay? It was like very, very minimal. It's not gonna do anything for that household for the most part, make sense? So anyway, that's what it comes down to. Now remember, the minimum benefit as well remained the same at $23. It's been $23, so I think this is the third consecutive year now, it's been at $23 uh, for SNAP benefits, the minimum, by the way. And I know that a lot of you here in the community get the minimum because I've seen your comments on live streams and down below in other videos and things like that. I've seen that, $23, again, 
considering food prices have gone up significantly more than that, uh, you know, $23, not going to get you much, especially now when food those when those food prices keep moving up higher and higher and uh, <laughs> your minimum benefit stays the same at $23. Yeah, there you go. It's just kind of the same old thing. Um, okay, so that's why some people got a raise, some people didn't. Did I kind of hammer it out for you? And that's for the COLA, specifically for SNAP, not the Social Security COLA. That's a totally different topic. We can focus on that one in another video, which I'll have plenty of you know information that I need to bring you with that. Uh, so stay tuned if you're a fixed income beneficiary. Now, let's talk about some of the other changes that came into effect. Multiple, okay? Multiple changes came into effect. I've talked about some of them before in other videos, but I want to hammer some of these out really quickly. Number one is the income threshold, okay? So the income threshold, they always have income thresholds as far as uh, household size. You can make you know, 130% of the federal poverty line to be eligible for SNAP benefits, and then they look at your household size, household of one, two, three, four, five, and it just goes up and up and up. That adjusts a little bit every single year. So that changed as of October 1st. Also, uh, money, cash, cash equivalent, or asset levels is kind of what they refer to it as. But basically how much money you can have in like cash and cash equivalents. Now there's some uh, exemptions to that rule. And that also depends on how many people are in your household, as well as is somebody in your household age 60 or over, or does somebody have a disability? If that's the case, that thro uh, threshold also is a little bit higher than the household who does not have somebody over the age of 60 and who does not have somebody who's disabled. Again, I've dedicated videos here on the channel talking about that. And um, that's kind of the information there, okay? So these are some of the major changes. Now, another one I want to bring to your attention. This is a big, big topic that uh, like nobody's talking about. I've talked about it many times here leading up to this announcement and uh, leading up to this change. I've mentioned it many, many times. A lot of people are just dismi uh, dismissing this, but I'm going to throw it out there really quickly because I feel like it's a pretty important one. So last year, 2023, it was about May or June, I'm, you know, around that time frame of 2023. So what is that, a year and a half ago now? There was the debt ceiling issue. Do you remember this? I talked about it a lot at the time. But anyway, as a result of the negotiations on the debt ceiling deal, they came in and made changes to SNAP. Okay, I know it's a long story, but just kind of stick with me. Okay, so they made some changes to SNAP. What they did is they raised the threshold of the age for those people who need to uh, basically fulfill the work requirements for those individuals who are ABAWD, able-bodied adults without dependents. That's what that stands for, okay? Now, as of last year, prior to October 1st of last year, 2020, no, let me take that back. As of uh, prior to September 1st of last year, 2023, the age range was 18 to 49. That's what it was. However, September 1st of last year, 2023, it went from 18 to uh, prior to that, it went from 18 to 49 to 18 to 50. So it went up by one year. Then October 1st of last year, uh, 2023, it went from 18 to 52. It went up another two years a month later. Now this year, October 1st of 2024, okay, so you following all this, <laughs> right? <laughs> October 1st of 2024, it went from uh, 18 to 54. Make sense? Okay, so now this is the new age range for those people who are able-bodied adults without dependents who need to fulfill those work requirements, okay? Now, does this impact everybody? No, it does not impact everybody. If you are over the age of 54 and you're, you know, you're able-bodied but you're over the age of 54, you're exempt. Why? Because your age would make you exempt. You're not within the age of uh, 18 to 54. Let's say that you're, I don't know, 40. 41, 42, 46, 35, 32, 28, it doesn't matter. If you're within the age range of 18 to 54 and you have a disability, are you still needing to fulfill the work requirements? No, you're exempt because disability. Disability is not an abled body person, okay? I'm just, I know that sounds harsh, but that's the reality of the matter. And again, I like to say this anytime I talk about this. I fall into this category. I am between the ages of 18 and 54. I am not abled bodied. Why? Can't see. My eyes don't work. Blind. Dude is blind. I am not able-bodied, okay? I have a disability. As a result, I'm not able-bodied. I can't do stuff, okay? There's a lot of things I can't do. Trust me. Uh, hang around me for a full day and you'll see a lot of stuff I can't do. It's really frustrating sometimes. But you get my point, okay? So that's my point, is if you're between those age ranges and you have a disability, you're good. You're good. You, you're, you're exempt. You do not fall into that category of uh, fulfilling work requirements. Now, let's just say that you're between the age ranges of 18 and 54 and you don't have a disability, but you have, an, uh, you have a minor dependent. Again, you're exempt. Why? 
dependent. You got a dependent. Make sense? Able-bodied adults without dependents is what ABAWD stands for. Make sense? Okay. I know this is incredibly confusing. I get it. I've made videos here talking about it. I've tried to explain this in a variety of different ways. Uh, trying to explain it again here. Um, I hope this helps you, but um, let's just say this much. If you're between the ages of 18 and 54, you do not have a dependent, you do not have a disability, uh, look out because that's who they're looking for. Uh, okay, they're not looking for you. They're not like out searching for you, <laughs> stuff like that. But just be aware that you may need to fulfill these work requirements, okay? Just saying, just kind of be aware of this. Um, I would guess that your local office has probably reached out to you. They probably sent you some kind of communication, um, whether that's through the mail or whatever, but they've probably been in communication just saying, hey, get ready, October 1st, which obviously is uh, history now, right? We're, we're beyond October 1st, so this is all in effect now. And... Um, that's just what I want to bring to your attention. Okay, so these are just some of the changes. Now, there's other changes that have also gone into effect, but um, I can talk about more of these in another video. I don't want this video to get too long here, but I hope this helps you, okay? But to answer that main question that I said earlier, why did some people get a raise and why did some people get stiffed? Let's just say this much. Basically, everybody got stiffed. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who it is. Y'all got stiffed if you're a fixed income beneficiary because they raised uh, SNAP benefits by t a 0.2%, two tenths of 1%. That's it. Tiny. Nothing. It's basically zero. So that's what it comes down to. And the reason behind that is they say food inflation is nothing. You know, food inflation, according to their metrics, was basically flat. I don't know where they're shopping. I wish I knew because um, <laughs> you could get uh, some really good deals, apparently, wherever they're shopping and getting their pricing from. I don't think at any normal grocery store that many of us are visiting. But anyway, nothing we can do about it. Unfortunately, we just have to kind of take it and just kind of pretend like we didn't notice, right? Uh, so anyway, hope this helps you. But again, please make sure to like the video down below. Thumbs up button. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Otherwise, subscribe as well. Put the big subscribe button if you haven't done so. Totally free to do so right down below the video. Otherwise, check out the other videos here on the channel. The very popular videos I've uh, hand selected for you down below in the description or the top of the comment section. And right now showing up on your screen as well. You'll see some videos there. Thank you so much. Take your selection now and I'll see you again a little bit later in the next video.